Oysters. What's the first thing that comes to your mind? <laughs> not quite, but not far off. Despite mounting scientific truths about oysters, people today still think that eating a lot of this can make you very, very horny. Well, this is not a show about food science, and I'm a chef. So today, here's how you can prepare an oyster for someone to make them very horny for you. <laughs> Now before we start, let me give you some context on the world's oldest myth. In Greek mythology, Aphrodite, the goddess of love, emerged from an oyster shell. Now, that goddess must have been pretty tiny, which in most contexts is not a good thing. Or, that oyster must have been one mother giant shellfish. Whatever the story is, oysters are delicious. Mm. Today we're going to use Japanese oysters and these babies come by the dozen, frozen but sashimi grade, so they're good eaten raw. I know, frozen. Some of you are like die-hard Gordon Ramsay Kitchen Nightmares fans and you say, oh, you shouldn't freeze oysters, this and that, this and that, but guess what? Gordon Ramsay doesn't live in Singapore and I do. And it's not easy to get fresh produce in Singapore. If you order oysters, by the time it reaches here, it's a few days old after the clear custom, it's not as fresh. In most oyster bars, freshly shucked oysters are served with a wedge of lemon or some white wine shallots. But it's very common to see on the table that they are serving it with a mother bottle of Tabasco. No judgement if you do choose to put some hot sauce in your oysters, but if you douse them with acidic nuclear liquid, then the oysters you bought are probably not worth your money because they're not fresh and need to mask them with a hot sauce. I can't taste my oysters. Why can't people just stick to lemons and shallots? Now, there are many different kinds of oysters and if I go through all of them, you probably won't remember by the end of this video. So, after buying oysters for so many years, here are three ways how I classify my oysters. Number one, the shape. Number two, the size. Number three, the flavour. Now for the shapes, we have a few. First, we have the elongated cups with a slightly sharp edge. The second are the deep cup. Those are a little bit rounded on the edge. The third one are the freely aged oysters. Now the fourth one are the bullon oysters. Bullon oysters, they are pretty round and flat and almost looks like a scallop. Now for sizes, they really vary based on the time taken to cultivate them, so I wouldn't go too much into detail. The third one is the most important, flavour. In general, I find that they really are based on which ocean that they are growing in. So in the Atlantic, usually you find the European or the American oysters on the East Coast. They are more briny and texturally more slippery and they really taste like a healthy, algae-filled, salty ocean. Now in the Pacific Ocean on the west side, we have the North American oysters on the west coast. Those are texturally meatier, but they're not as concentrated in the oceanic flavours. Now staying in the Pacific Ocean on the east side, you have the Japanese oysters. They are much less briny, they are sweeter and much creamier. I call this the chalice of fertility. This is opulence on steroids, and I only serve this to my Epicurean guests at my table. For this masterpiece, you need a stage. Find the perfect plate. Then on the oyster, assemble some finely sliced scallions, some caviar, and sea urchin on the top. Give a light squeeze of lemon juice, and a crack of citron peppercorns and you're done. You can stop here and serve this, and I guarantee you, you get some results in the evening. But just for good measure, let's make some magic happen. Smoke it in apple wood smoke for that additional depth of flavour. The smoke binds with the fattiness of the oyster, urchin and caviar, and that brings out the sweetness of each ingredient. Cheers! Mmm! Mmm! Let's say someone you're feeding doesn't like it raw, and honestly, who doesn't like it raw, right? <laughs> no problem, let's turn up the heat. 
Oysters pair exceedingly well with burnt leeks or chives. And this next dish is what I serve on my menu and I call it oysters and burnt leeks. Start off with a base of soft, buttery mashed potatoes. On top of that, lay down a confit of leeks. And then, a layer of fresh, crisp threads of spring onion. In a pot with salt water brine, gently heat up the oysters. And then rest it on top of the spring onions. To finish, spoon over burnt chive oil on top of the oyster. Then dust it with burnt leek charcoal. Creamy, texturally exciting and smoky. If you can't do this at home, book a seat here. I'll cook it for you. Now the beautiful thing about oysters is that there are a ton of things that you can cook with. But on its own, it's already so wonderful. So if you have that special day coming up, I recommend you preparing my chalice of fertility. There isn't much cooking involved. And if that doesn't get you some, then leave me a message and drop me a reservation. I'll take care of the evening at the table and you take care of your night in your bed. If you haven't already done so, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to Forecast TV. Every little bit of support is greatly appreciated. And if you have already done so, thank you so much for tuning in again. If you want to know where I get my products from, please look at the descriptions below. I'll see you at the next video.